Hello and welcome to this episode of the State of Mirrorless. Today our guest is Dave Kai Piper, a British photographer who has an impressive uh, roster of clients and who deals with uh, lots of genres of photography, including classic portraiture, fashion, landscape, music portraiture, events, and so on. So Kai, Dave, Dave, sorry. <laughs> uh, thanks for being here and welcome. Pleasure. And we have, as usual, uh, uh, my partner in crime, Mathieu Gasquet of MirrorLessons.com here. How's it going? Wow. Well, hi, Hugo. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Going well. So, uh, Dave, we would like to know a bit about your, uh, your career as a photographer and uh, why did you decide to, to start using a mirrorless systems? Um. That's a, it's a tricky question. I, I've always liked the idea that the right camera is the best, you know, the, the, the perfect camera is the right camera that's applicable to the job. So it wasn't the fact that it was small, it wasn't the fact that it was light. Um, for me, it was, it was, I have to be honest, it was, it was the styling, the styling of the X-Pro. I just looked at that camera and it's like, that's the sort of camera that I would, I'd really love to use. Um, I like the idea that I kind of kept back a, a hobby. And I kind of liked the fact that the, the camera looked good. It made me feel good. And it made me feel happy. Um, it wasn't really anything to do with the the camera's technology, unfortunately. It just happened that you know it was it was an amazing camera that looked really good. So it kind of ticked a couple of boxes for me. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been doing photography professionally? I've been paid for it for a, I'd say the last seven years or so. But I think professional photographer is a difficult one for me to get my head around. So you, you you didn't you did not start out with a with a Fuji X Pro One. Of course, you were using other at the beginning. It was not yet out. Yeah, um, I've I've used a lot of different cameras. Um, I'm very lucky. I uh, you know I've I've had the, the 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 fortune to use a lot of different cameras. I've shot from my first camera was a a Nikon. D two hundred. I've had a D ninety. I've shot with Canons. I've shot with um, at the minute I'm shooting with a D eight hundred. I've shot with Pentaxes. I've shot with Sigma cameras. I've shot with Olympus cameras, Fuji cameras. Pretty much everything. Um, the camera, in essence, for me, always is the you know um, it's one of the elements, but it's not the most important element for me. It's always been about the, the content and you know what you're shooting. Certain cameras are let you capture that in different ways um, but I'm very fortunate that I do have access to a lot of different cameras and, and can shoot different genres with, with different cameras and that's that's always been quite fascinating to me. So speaking of genres I, I mentioned uh, the ones that I saw on your on your website but what, what is it that you do most? Uh, I saw I, some of your portrait uh, fashion work that is really amazing. Is that what your main interest? Um, People, I think. I, I like how people fit into the world. Um, I've I've always taken on board the critique that I've always been given that I I've, I've never really stopped to specialise in a genre, and I think most uh, most of the, the photographers that I admire are you know either portrait photographers or um, you know p photographers that have nailed down a niche market. Um, and I've never been able to do that because I think my my interest is is people as a whole, not you know people doing one specific activity. It's photographing people and all of the different things that people do, um, which leads me to shooting you know band portraiture, which leads me to shooting um, landscapes because I like how people fit into these landscapes. Um, I like how people change their landscapes. That those sorts of things for me, it's always about. Um, how people fit into the world, I think, um, which is a strange genre to mm. shoot, I think. No, uh, I can relate to that. I mean, uh, I shoot a lot of landscapes, but if, uh, if I can have uh, people in those landscapes, like most times they, they make the 
I think the scene and the story more more interesting. Well, it, I, I think I think I mean the landscapes. I recently actually moved into my. I, I changed my website around a little bit the other day. I moved my landscapes into my personal collection and turned my personal work into my portrait work. And for the last couple of years, that's actually been the other way around. I had a landscape gallery, and my personal work was my portraiture. Um, and it, the other day, um, you know, I. I had someone look at my my body of work, and you know they pointed out that you know I'm you know again I'm I'm a photographer that takes photographs of people, so therefore I think my landscapes now fit into the the personal kind of collections. Um, but I'm always photographing landscapes to show people. I think that's the thing for me. I'm not photographing mm -hmm. something because it looks pretty. I'm usually photographing it and then showing people, going, look, this is amazing. Um, so some photographs are taken of people and I think I take some photographs to show people. Great. And uh, you shoot for magazines, uh, your, your assignment work when you do portraits, <coughs> uh, what kind of uh, customers do you have? I mean, it, it, um, I, I mean a, a good example of this would be um, like if I'm shooting a band um, I think a lot of music photographers photograph the whole band and see them, you know, see it as one entity. And I kind of really like to to split the band up and to photograph the individual people. And I think portraiture is really, really good at identifying person to person. Um, so again, I kind of go back to I see all of the, you know, all of my clients usually as 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 a portrait shoot. And what that person's wearing, or what they do, or everything aside from that, is the client's business. But when I'm photographing them, I see them as individual portraits. Um, so if I'm photographing a band, I like to kind of really pull out, you know, individual um, attributes. And if it's a group portrait, then that, you know, that, you know, it can be that. And I kind of like how all of the different things that I photograph allow me to always come back to that that core principle that I like to photograph people. Um, the, where the clients come from, it can be from anything from a you know something from amateur photographer magazine or to photograph a, you know a rock and roll band. Um, the clients don't necessarily matter to me that much in what their brief is. It, it's usually the the people that I'm photographing, so it's all kind of the same to me. Mm -hmm. um, speaking again of uh, gear equipment, what is your Current setup for for a typical shoot. At the minute, I'm shooting um, D800, um, Sigma 35, Sigma 50, Sigma 100 mil, and then obviously the the Fuji. I have the XT1, the I have a X Signature, X Pro in yellow, um, and mostly I've I've been playing with. Where is it? I got it. I got it out to show. Uh, then you. I've been testing out the 16 to 55. Mm -hmm. um, that hasn't left this camera for a long time. This is quite a fun lens. I think this actually comes out today. Is it the fifteenth today? It's the sixteenth today. Sixteenth. So this is so this went on sale yesterday. Mm -hmm. So yes. How, how do you find that lens? Um, that I, I, I guess the people who buy that lens, which is not cheap, will. Well, well more than fun. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I've 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 had it for about two months now, and when I first got it, I I didn't know what the price was going to be at all. It was a pre-production lens, and I thought it was going to be about fifteen hundred pounds, um, which you know is a lot of money, but it's kind of it's the same ballpark as <coughs> twenty twenty four to seventy. I think even that's even that's I think it's a bit cheaper than than a Nikon or or, or Canon, um, but that's what this lens is up against quality-wise, and it delivers. Um, and it was only a couple of weeks ago that I found out that it was uh, what, 899 pounds or something. Um, so I think it's <laughs> absolutely for for what you're buying, it's 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 extremely economical because it's a lens that you can categorically work with for a long, long time. Um, and it, people said that it's big, that it's heavy, that it's expensive, but all of those things are relative to where the system has been before with Fuji. So if you compare it to the 18 to 55, yes, it is. But as a professional system, it's still a lot lighter um, than a DSLR kit. 
Um, so I think that's the interesting thing. I think the the, the Fuji system has is you know um, it's, it's started to split a little bit now. You're starting to see with the, the is it the 150 to uh, 140 uh, the the long one and the 16 to 55. Um, you're starting to get lenses that are being designed about pure quality, and these are lenses that you can totally categorically trust and work with day in day out and and at the same time you're still getting people buying into the system and using the system because it's a great hobbyist setup and I think it's a really interesting mix um, where they go from here I think especially kind of 2015-2016 um, is going to be really really exciting I think the you know when the team comes out that's that's going to be a lens that definitely goes onto my onto my kit as well that's that'll be a portrait lens um, but yeah um, I forgot the question was to be honest <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, never mind. It's okay to yeah. move a bit. Uh, as long as I answered something. Uh, you you don't <laughs> miss the you don't think the the lack of uh, image stabilization in that lens no. is a shortcoming. No, it, no, it's it's. I've been asked this again and again and again and again and and a few other times and again. Really not. No. Um. No. Um. What would the, if you're going to add something to this like Fuji's? Uh, okay. Um. Uh, the whole of photography is about balance, you know, we, we look for the best exposure, which is a balance of light and dark and this and that, and we look for, you know, everything's a balance. I'm just trying to think, you know, for this lens to be designed for the cost that it's been designed at, for the size that it's been designed at, for the, you know, for the, for the quality and everything around it, what would I want to change to put in a stabilization? You know, would I pay more money? You know, do you want it bigger? Do you want it heavier? Do you want it? You know, if you put something like that into a lens, you have trade-offs, and they're usually financial, or usually weight-based. Um, and I think that lens has been designed absolutely impeccably. Um, what would I want to lose to gain stabilization? I can put it on a tripod, or I can lift my ISO. It's not. It's not a massive deal. It really isn't. And I prefer the extra battery life, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So just lift up your ISO and carry on. Like it's no big deal. You turn it off if you're going to be doing video. You turn it off if you're putting it on a tripod anyway. So yeah, no, I wouldn't. I don't know. I I'm not. Sure, that do you have any anything you would like to ask? Well, yeah, yeah. Well, since uh, in uh, in Dave's work, uh, there's always a very interesting and very beautiful use of lights. And so I wanted to ask him. I uh, ask you actually. Uh, what kind of lights are you using? Uh, if you're using different setup for the Fujifilm and for the Nikon uh, system, no. or do you use the same flashes? Because I, a lot of people are always interested in uh, in uh, using uh, the Fuji cameras with flashes, and sometimes yeah. they find it more difficult to search and find the exact, the perfect match, as we can as you can say. So, so, so you can yeah. it, people can see this image as that pops up. Okay. Yeah, so, while I was sharing some images that yeah. you see. <clears throat> Okay. Um, I mean, do you want me to talk about the specific lighting on, on the pictures or just a general kind of thing? Well, it can be in general, and then, yeah, why not? We okay. can also use some examples um, too. Yeah, I mean, it, for, for me, to, you know, to reiterate one of the things I said at the very start, the, the camera itself is, is the, you know, um, it's, it's an element of the photography, but it's not, you know, nearly you know an important element if you know looking at this image um, you know no one in the world could tell me what camera it shot on no one and and you know it's just an image and the camera is is an, is, is a tool to make the image um, some have advantages and some have disadvantages um, so I don't shoot any different if I'm using um, a Fuji camera or if I'm using the, the, the D800. I'm really not. Um, and I don't treat flash any differently. I use it exactly the same setup for the flash as I do for the Nikon. And and very often I'll turn up a shoot with both cameras um, and, and you know, switch between the two of them. Um, it means I can carry less lenses overall because I have the 16 to 55 and then I carry usually two primes for the, for the Nikon. Um, and I just take the hot shoe off and and put it on my other my other camera and off I go. Um, these days I, I shoot with one single light source and it's usually mixing ambient 
Um, I like I, I usually shoot with a big 170 um, uh, 170 centimeter softbox and just mix that in with the ambient light. Um, I try not to think too much about it. Um, I, I I try and take my photographs with no light, and then if I have to add light, then you know if I'm forced to add light, then I'll add one light. Um, and it's very very rare these days that I add multiple lights in there. Um, I'd rather shoot, uh, you know, different time of day where there is sunshine. Really. So I was looking at this uh, photo <coughs> that you sent me, <clears throat> which is of you shooting. So taken by somebody else, of course. But I was interested in the in the setup there. And this is the the Fuji XT1, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, well, it's quite an in interesting photograph, actually. I, I think on the Fuji website, the image that I was lining up to take was actually used as one of the um, the sample images for the 1655 lens. Um, yeah. So, uh, first of all, thank you to Matthew Malik for assisting me on this shoot. It was a it was a pretty pretty long cold day, but it was pretty fun. But uh, yeah, so I'm shooting. Um, I'm just trying to think what we've got here. We've got one Profoto B1 with a strip adding fill fill light, and then there's a backlight through a window coming through. Um, but most of the kind of um, controlling of the of the ambient light um, in the room is being controlled using two ND filters, um, which I use on my um, show them. Um, there's actually quite a good blog. I can. Oh, is he left? No, I was. Uh, I switched the screen to, to oh, you, okay. so you can show what you have. Uh, okay. Um, there's a pretty good blog that's up on F-Stoppers actually that a um, guy called Clay Cook um, did. But maybe I should touch on this a bit more for the Fuji thing. But I'm not sure if you can see through. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Hang on, so if I put it in front. It, looks like it has a bellows, and then there is yeah. a so, uh, so, holder on the other side. Yeah, so in, in the back of here, I've got two ND filters. Um, there we go. And I put one in one way and one in the other. And it basically just allows me just to control the ambient light a lot more. I think most people are very comfortable with the idea of using filters for shooting landscapes. Mm -hmm. um, but I just love how they kind of control the light for portraiture. I mean, if you're taking a photograph of someone's, you know, of someone's face or torso, being able to just, you know, add that side, you know, definition from either side just by crossing over two ND filters just adds that definition onto the side of someone's face. So, you know, you can, you know, just shoot a lot quicker and worry a lot less because I can rotate the filters on the end of here. And um, I've got a bunch of different colored filters as well. So, you know, I can kind of add colored vignettes across and all those. So these are mostly graduated ND filters. Yeah. Um, I see. Um, I have. Um, so this system is the 100 mil system, which fits on um, uh, most kind of big big system cameras, a DSLR size kit. Um, I do actually have an identical kit for the uh, Fuji system as well. It just happens that um, this has, the 1655 have a, has a 77 mil filter fit, which is too big for the the 75 system mm -hmm. so i use the bigger the bigger system but i have a whole range of different um different leaf filters um for different toning effects and stuff like that um i've got a lot of filters <laughs> so what's what's funny is i think a lot of people think that i heavily use photoshop to color my images um but it's all done it's all done in camera so when I, when I saw that image, I, well, I'll bring it up again on the screen. Uh, I was actually thinking that you were using uh, uh, an ND filter to uh, open up your aperture and have a short no. depth of field. No, not at uh, all. In, indoors, it would not have made much sense, I guess. <laughs> I I mean you can do you you can use them to I mean I guess that's like a like, that's a crossover from the film world I guess where using um, using filters can let you control your aperture a little bit more um, but I'm using them for for kind of creative effect so because uh, how I've got it balanced there I reckon so that the I reckon the bottom bit is the you know the lower half of the lens that's being pointed kind of 
towards the floor. Um, so my two filters, what I've probably got is uh, a 0.9 and a 0.6 um, blocking out the big window and then killing the the heavy white that's on the table. So it kind of just, you know, lets, lets the, the person focus there. Uh, the brightest subject, sorry, the brightest element of any picture should be the the main subject, um, and I wouldn't have wanted that to be the the bright window light or the bright table. So I just kind of use the filters just to kill the light um, over them, really. Interesting, very interesting. I would have thought of that. So, so well, yeah. uh, I mean, don't spend. It, in, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, I mean, it, uh, uh, well, like I basically got a call one day from. From Graham Merritt for, uh, from Lee Filters, and um, they were coming up with the the, the seven five system, and that's why I have lots of lots of funky kind of trial colours, and um, it it was quite interesting because they, they they wanted to explore how um, filters could be used in a in a different area than landscape photography. Um, I mean, it's actually, on that picture, you can kind of start to see on 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 the model's lapel jacket. You can see the 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 great, you know, the grad the gradual shades of of red, and basically that's just a, a, grad, a soft graduated ND filter that's coming up through his jacket. Um, I would have replicated that in Photoshop, just by kind of you know, or Lightroom by by making a gradiated um, filter. Um, so it just makes sense now to, to put it on here. But it, it first started when you know when Lee said, you know, is there anything that people could do shooting portraits with their um, with filters? Um, I mean, people do it all the time on Instagram. It's the first thing they do. They jump online, they put some crazy colours on it, and off you go. Um, so why you can't use filters for shooting stuff normally? Um, I was just like, yeah, that sounds sounds like a great idea. So I wish I could take. But I mean, other people do it all the time. Jerry Al is a big portrait um, shooter, and he shoots a lot with, um, you know, filters. And Benjamin Von Wong is a big Lee Filters fan, and um, it's just thinking outside the box, you know. Yep. But I, I wish I could claim it was my idea, but it's not. I had no idea. That that's very, very, very interesting. So something that I might try one day. <laughs> uh, and one more thing, what, what is it that you have on top of the camera on the hot shoe there? Oh, that's the um, so the camera has got um, um, that would uh, on the top of the camera that would just be the um, the Pro Photo um, remote, mm -hmm. um, and then I have the uh, Matthew Maddock does these really nice um, camera um, Arca plates. Um, so I've got that on there as well. It just kind of adds a little bit of bulk to the camera, and just kind yeah, of the L bracket. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's quite funny when you know one of the things that people said that they loved about the X series when it first came out was the the, the compact nature of it. But it's amazing how big <laughs> I can build an XT1 up to now with a battery grip and a plate and a and a you know the 1655 and a Lee filter matte box kit. <laughs> But it's stable, you know. It builds up, and if you're, if you're, you know, it's a, it's a really, you know, the bigger the camera, the more stable it is. Um, and it's a tool for me. It's a work tool. My my hobbyist camera or my fun camera is my is my Fuji X Pro. What 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 is your favorite camera overall? <coughs> if you have one, I mean, it's fine not to have a favorite. Let's say a favorite. The the favorite the lens camera combination that you would grab first. Well, I have I have. If you a, were stranded on a desert island, what would you bring I, with you? Do you know what I I'd, I should have brought my my yellow Fuji down to show you actually. Is it, I don't think it's within reach, but um, pro probably 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 that camera. I I have a I have a fun story. I didn't show you the the picture, but it's on my website. I um I had the opportunity to photograph Bob Geldof. Um, and uh, oh, Sir Bob Geldof, I should say. And um, w one of the one of the fun things that I did it was the the first shoot that I did using the using. Well, I shot some pictures with the Fuji, and I shot some pictures with my Sigma. As uh, not the Sigma with the with the D eight hundred, sorry. Um, and his reaction when I kind of pulled out this bright yellow banana leather camera. There you go. Um, was was quite interesting. Um, 
uh, and I don't know. It's kind, of, it's kind of, I, you know, I pulled, I pulled out the yellow camera first, and um, he just smiled, and I just, I don't know. It's just like it's just a happy, non-invasive camera, and it was, it was quite, it was quite fun. So I think, I think that camera because you definitely can, can change the person's view of you when you pull out. Uh, uh, you know, a bright coloured camera like that, and I think it's quite interesting that a lot of people think that cameras should just be black. Um, which, yeah, I think you know, if you're trying to blend in with your surroundings, but um, I kind of like to like to get involved with my surroundings. So I think at the minute that yellow, that yellow, yeah, yellow Fuji X Pro, I think is my favourite camera. You don't get the um, the look, the the. Pe the the people who give you that look, and because they expect you to to show up with a big DS black DSLR. I, I, I might. They're they're not the sort of people that book me though. <coughs> they're they're really not. And and. I, they, I yeah no. I never once has anyone ever ever said to me, you know, um, you know, this is the job. This is it. And we want you to shoot it on a black camera. Never. It's just. No, I, it just I guess happen. it never happens uh, actually. But some people are afraid that it might happen, so they are holding back from but showing. Who, who, how, who are these people? Email me. I want to hear from you. <laughs> like I, I'm pretty sure it's something that 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 people say, but these people don't exist. Surely, surely no one's like, oh, I, I'm not going to get a booking if my camera isn't black. Like oh, I will, I will try to to dig them up. <laughs> I'm gonna get like a million emails now, right? <laughs> no, there, there aren't many actually. It's it's something that that people say, but I I, I believe it doesn't really happen in practice. Yeah. At least not not with a rock star. I mean, yeah, those people. No, I, be right, it, it, the 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 different happens. Say if you're working for a commercial client and and they say, you know, the the image needs to be this, you know, then fine. Use a tool that gives you that. You know, that's that's, you know, that's how that works. If they need a resolution of X, then you need to capture it as you know in that manner. Or if you know the client's brief, you know, requires this, then that's what you need. Um, you know, so if you're shooting, you know, a London London Fashion Week, you're shooting the runway shows. Um, you're probably not using a CSC camera. You know, it's just not that that tool for that job. Um, you know, but if you're, if, you know, if you're going on holiday and you want to take a couple of nice pictures of this and a couple of nice pictures of that, and you know, um, then you might take a CSC camera. You're not going to take your full your full kit. Um, uh, camera choice for me is, uh, and you know, favorite camera is is always what you know what's the job, and how do I best deliver that job. That's yeah. that's what it comes down to. And, yeah, uh, and here Bob Geldof definitely has that look. That says, "Is the guy <laughs> shooting me with that yellow camera?" <laughs> well, yeah, it was it was it was quite funny. Yeah. It was quite funny. But I don't know, you know, it was it was just, you know, like I mean, so, some 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 photographers don't don't they want the camera to be invisible, but I think sometimes when you're shooting, especially when when I'm shooting people that have. Um, a lot of presence themselves. Um, you need to, you know, you need to come in and match that. Um, you know, I'm taking a photograph of him. He's having his photograph taken by me. I'm the one calling the shots. I'm saying stand up, sit down, move left, right. And these aren't people that are used to being told to do that. So you need to kind of come in on a certain way. And the size of your camera is is irrelevant. It's it's how you use these things and how you use all of the tools around you. Um, you know, I, I shot those pictures with a tiny little speed light. Um, there wasn't any big setup, and it was shot in a production room, which was, you know, two meters by a meter. You know, we had to shuffle past each other <laughs> to sit down. Um, no big setup. He walked in the room, took the pictures, and he left again. Um, so yeah. Matthew, any? Uh, uh, how long, how long a, a, a shoot can can take when uh, when when you really have the time to uh, set all the lights and also what you're looking for first? You, you told before that uh, you said before that uh, you like to uh, shoot landscape 
to put people in it. So uh, when you have in a location, what you are, what, what is the first thing you're looking for? Uh, is you first try to uh, see where the people can fit nicely, or you try first to look for a nice corner or yeah. nice scenery that you um, like. I'm just trying to think. That's very observant of you. You've read that somewhere, haven't you? Uh, I'm sure I've said that. <laughs> You're right there. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, for me, you know, um, landscapes, portraits, it's all the same thing. It's all the same thing. Um, a lot of my portraiture, a lot of my fashion work, or a lot of the fashion-based portraiture, um, all starts from you know building that frame, that frame, finding that frame, um, and then figuring out how your subjects fit into that frame because where they are is just as important as who they are, and you know time of day is just you know all of these different elements all stack up together. Um, one really good ex example, I think, to, to explain this. Um, uh, there's, there's a shoot I recently did for a band called Jetpack, and they're, you know, they're a, they're a new band from Birmingham. And it, it, one of my friends got in touch, a, a chap called Roy, and he's like, you know, can we shoot the, you know, can you come and shoot the band? And and um, I was like, brilliant, cool, yeah. I have this great idea. We have to go to this beach at like, you know, half five in the morning because I want to shoot in the morning sunshine. <laughs> and um, you know, so we went. <laughs> it was pretty weird. It was like it ended like a 36-hour shoot in total, but you know, it was worth it because I wanted to do the shot half five in the morning on this beach with them cold and wet. The, you know, the water's just gone out and the picture looks incredible and I think it looks great. And um, the, the the fact that I know that it's half five in the morning and we'd all been up for like you know we'd driven down from Birmingham um, at 3 o'clock in the morning after, you know, being up all night, and it was a whole thing, and to me that, you know, the, there you go, um, you know, that that sunrise is part of it, you know, so that, that tiny shot which took, you know, by the time we'd, we'd set it up, it took, um, you know, five, six minutes to do the pictures total but you know getting there the preparation finding this spot finding that spot checking this checking that um, we just went bang 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 we took we took these last portraits in about three minutes before we got back in the van and drove back um, but the whole shoot you know took you know I was out my door for 36 hours um, you know just for just for these photographs um, and you know we could have probably done it at a different time of day um, but to me, it's not the same thing. I'd rather I'd rather go through it all and have the location be part of it. And you know, I, I had in my head that you know, if you take the guys out of that picture, actually, it's on the screen. If you took those those guys out of that picture, that would still be a nice picture. Um, and that's kind of how I like a lot of my work. It's you know, um, <coughs> frame something up as if it was going to be a landscape image, and then build your characters and your subjects into the scene and when it all sings together um, I really really love you know how all that comes out um, and this is pretty much straight out of the camera I don't think these have had um, pretty much any editing at all I mean, you, you can see on the top and the bottom the the ND filters coming in there to kind of darken down the skies and yeah quite yeah that was a long day um, <laughs> I can imagine but, that's, that's really that's really interesting. That's really interesting. This way, or, or the, the, the what, one of the most important thing I think for 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 oh, I don't want to say for other people because I've never been one to just kind of you should do this, um, but the you know the camera you use, the lens you use, um, the memory card you use, the you know the computer, the Mac, the Apple, you know whatever it whatever it is, is never, never as important as who you're shooting, how they feel, and what time of day you're shooting them. You know, those things are the most important things. I could have shot that with my iPhone, and it would have still had more impact, um, you know, than if I was, you know, worrying about getting things technically perfect, um, or wor worrying about, you know, if I'd have had this lens, you know, next month I'm going to go and shoot that because I'm going to shoot it with this lens. Um, these things just aren't irrelevant, you know. It's the only things that you can use to improve your photography are free. Um, gear won't make you better. Um, you know, 
if you know how to use the little subtle nuances of your cameras, you know, like having a fun yellow camera, yes, can be fun if you're going to be a bit zany with it. But if you're not going to have the confidence to to do stuff, um, then it's then it's then it's kind of lost a little bit. Um, but that's what the you know, coming back to the Fuji thing, that's what the X series does give you. It does give you these little real subtle edges. Um, that you can use, but that's the same with you know, kind of an Olympus camera or um, you know, a Sony camera or whatever. Um, you know, yeah. Yeah, great. Uh, completely agree, and uh, yeah. it's great to, to talk about the not just about gear, but the intersection of uh, equipment and creativity and what can people. Uh, yeah. Camera that is not much unless they're willing to. To, to put something of their own into into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely, definitely. Yeah, so I mean that that that, that, ex, that extra little bit of effort, I think, is 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 always free and makes the biggest difference. Yep. The the camera thought maybe can shape your attitude a bit, right, Kevin? Uh, the 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 yellow camera I've got when I when I use my X100s, I, I realize my attitude is different. Yeah. In some ways, so that, that works, but it's not just uh, it's not the fact that it's got a certain kind of sensor and yeah, but the, the, I mean, buttons, you know. the interesting thing is is that you could you know you could act the same way with a different camera you know it's but it is it's a mental psychological thing um, exactly. which is fine you know I, I yeah I use you know I use a bunch of different cameras because you know I feel I'm a different photographer using them. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, so my last question would be, what, what what does the future have in store for Dave Kai Piper? <laughs> um, gosh. New projects, new things coming up. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Um. I uh, yeah. I, the, the, there's there's a lot of stuff coming up. Um. I mean, in in the immediate future. Um, we have the photography show just around the corner. Um, Going to be there talking with um, Smug Mug in the evenings, and I'm doing some talks for Photo Speed, who are a printing company, in the in the morning. And we're going to talk about kind of um, all the things that necessarily aren't, you know, des you know, camera related. You know, kind of being a better photographer around the the camera, the camera stuff. Um, so can we're going to kind of look into those things. Yeah, can, can you tell us, uh, tell our viewers a bit more about the photography show, what it is, where it is, and when? I'll try. You might have to do some fact checking. Um, <laughs> it's going to be at the NEC in Birmingham, and I believe it's on the 21st to 24th. Um, it's a big. Um, the equivalent will be um, kind of uh, a bit like photo. Yeah, Photo Plus or whatever, but in the UK, so it's the English version. Um, you know, everyone, everyone from it's. I think if you just put photography show into Google, you'll find it. Um, I'm not sure what the exact URL is. Um, um, I'll I'll do a blog about it as well. So, um, but yeah, so you know, there's a, a whole bunch of you know. Uh, very amazing. There you go. A whole bunch of very amazing photographers um, speaking. My, you know, very good friend Rebecca Littles, um doing a talk as well. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, if you're in the UK, you, you'll 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 know the photographer. So do do come down. Um, so I'm doing some stuff with those guys. We're actually going to be doing. Um, Matt Hart and I are going to be doing a Fuji uh, street walk and uh, have a bit of fun on the Saturday, I believe. I don't think anything's been formally announced. Sorry if I've let that one out the bag. Um, oh yeah, okay. Martin Parr and Don McCullen are doing two two talks, which I'm definitely going to get to. But yeah, on the on the Saturday, um, Matt Hart and I are doing a photo walk around Birmingham, so that'll be fun. And then we'll um, yeah. So beyond the photography show, I don't know if I want to. Jinx my plans, but I have some. I have some big stuff coming up. Um, I'm going to try and do some traveling. I can say that. Um, just, just tell whatever you're comfortable telling. Just yeah. I don't want I'm, to push you. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try and. I'll be able to come and see both of you in person. I can say that. Great. I can say that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, beyond that, I can't really say two more. Okay, great. And. Um, 
Uh, yeah, but no, even what I wanted to say, I, I would love to, to come to, to Birmingham for that event. I don't think it would be possible. Then the fact that you mentioned Martin Parr, who is one of my heroes, and it's uh, from what I I saw some interviews with him and videos, and it's a very the, nice and, and fun guy. Also, the, the, there, there, was, there was something I was going to mention earlier about, about Martin Parr, and I'm, I'm, I have to apologise if I'm crossing my references here. Um, one of my friends, uh, Geoff Harris, he's um, uh, he was a former editor of um, Digital Photographer. Again, my facts may be wrong, please. I'm sure he was. Um, he recently did an interview um, with Martin Parr, and um, Martin, he asked Martin, you know, kind of, he has this kind of very direct, uh, almost like a street style. I guess these days it would be a street style thing. You know, he's kind of, you know, doc, documenting the 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 English quintessential English, you know, kind of beach life and you know seaside life and those sorts of things. And he shoots with a, you know, like a very big flash setup sort of thing. And he was asked about, you know. Does he feel awkward, you know, carrying these systems around and stuff, and his camera choices and stuff? And I, I, I've never been one to think that as a photographer I have to hide from what I'm photographing. I don't think there's anything that makes me think that I just have to stand back and observe. Um, I've always liked to, you know, I've I've known that I'll be showing an edited slice of whatever I'm photographing. That's why we're photographers and that's what we do. We like to show people how we see something. And and I, I like the way that he had no fear of, you know, using a big camera setup, big flash, stand there, take someone's photograph. And I, I, I kind of really like that. Um, and I, I've used, you know, those sorts of influences into my work and it was it was quite nice hearing Martin Martin Parr say that, you know, he's he just got in, took the photograph, and got out again. And and you know, I always thought that was quite funny. He he was never one to hide from from his surroundings. I I did quite like that. But I'm I'm I'll see if I can find a link to the interview with Martin Parr. It's very very good. Yeah, if you want to send me send it to me, I will add it to the blog post when we publish this, so people can uh, can go on and see it. All right. Uh, I don't have any more questions. Matthew, do you have any more? Ah, uh, I'm fine. No, I have no any, no more. Any, more. any anything that you want to add? No, I'm good. Nope, you're good. So last thing is, where can people go find you? Hang on. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, ideasandimages.co.uk. That's where I. Yes, sometimes the the video quality on on G plus is not very good, and people cannot read the URLs. But yeah, that's yeah. Just ideas, put, ideasandimages.co.uk, and it will be on the on the blog post. There will be a link to to your site or any other link that you that you want to add. That's okay. So. Thanks for being with us today. It was really, really interesting and appreciated. It's all good. And I hope we'll, we'll see soon. And Mathieu, to you too. Thanks oh, for yes, today. Thank you. I'll uh, certainly meet Dave at the photography show because uh, we're. Are going you, to, are you uh, coming over? Yeah, yeah, we'll be there the four days. So we'll meet probably yeah. you, Matt, and other for other for people as well. That'll be fun. Are you gonna come on the uh, uh, come on the photo walk on Saturday then? Yeah, probably. Probably we'll go to that as well. So. That'd be cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks again and bye everyone. Marvelous. Bye. Cool. Thank Take you. care. Right. Where's that? Where was that off button there? I have to find it. There it is. See you later.